Sarah Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how you can make this teeny tiny watercolor palette bracelet and tiny little block of paper that you can take on all of your crafty adventures this summer. So this little bracelet will fit right on your wrist and I'm using a teeny tiny little craft paper jewelry box from our sponsor Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com and as you can see I can fit like four colors, five colors of paint in there, and I, that's all I really need to go painting on the go. And if I team that up with some watercolor paper and a couple water brushes, I'm all set. And I can use the lid for mixing colors, and it really is fantastic. I made the block of paper small. It's like four and a half by three inches. And then I found an old sock that had a hole in it. I cut the bottom off and I wrapped that around, just kind of slid my watercolor paper block in there and it made itself its own little pocket that I could stick the water brushes in. So it made it super duper convenient to have that because I could always clean my brushes on that as I needed. Are you ready to learn how to make this? Let's get started. The first thing I did was stamp these moth wings on the lid of this tiny craft paper box. And I will put a link to everything I used in the video description so you can find things easily. And you might even have a little box around your home that will work like this. So now that I have the moth wings down, I have this really big kind of whimsical script stamp and I thought this would be great to do um, around my wings and also on the edges of my box. So when you're stamping on a box like that, I recommend that you, um, kind of put your fingers inside the box and press it down against the stamp, have the stamp rubber side up. That seems to work a lot easier for this. Then I added some colors to my box. I used purple on the moth wings and I used some yellow around the edges of the box and in the background. And not only does this add a little pretty color to the box, but it also helps protect it against moisture. Then I glued this embellishment over the um, center of the wings so it would kind of be the moth body. And this little embellishment came with those uh, wing stamps from Prima. I'm using hot glue to glue this down. So I just filled the cavity completely with the hot glue. You could also use any thick cold glue for this. Just give it ample time to dry. Now I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do for the wells to hold my paint inside of my box. And I've been saving these little tubes. They kind of come around um, the paint round paint brushes to protect their um, bristles when they're um, in the store or being shipped. Well, I saved a bunch of those thinking I'd make some beads out of them, but they worked perfect for this. So basically what I'm doing is cutting them at about um, half an inch thick and I'm gonna glue them inside the box. Since the box is made of paper, I wanna make sure it's waterproof on the inside. So I'm squeezing in an ample amount of hot glue and then I'm using a silicone spatula to spread this around the bottom and the sides of the inside of the box. That way, if um, anything gets too juicy in there, if I get paint in there or too much water I mean in there when I'm mixing, it's not gonna damage my paper box and my bracelet will last a long time. Now I'm adding a little more glue because the waterproofing layer has dried and I am going to nestle those four little um, circles in there. So if you don't have these little brush protector tubes, you could use any sort of like big straws or tubes you have. Maybe the next time you go and have a milkshake at a fast food joint, you could save that straw because those straws are kind of thick. You just want something that you'll be able to fit your round brush in. And I see I have a little bit of space in the center, so I am just going to cut off one of the smaller um, brush protector tubes. I have and nestle that right in the center so I can fit another color in there. To get rid of any hot glue strings that may have formed while you were moving and readjusting your wells, just blast it with a heat tool for a couple seconds and they will disappear. While the palette is cooling, let's work on the bracelet. Simply take a piece of three quarter inch wide sewing elastic and wrap it around your wrist. Don't pull it tight, you just want the ends to overlap and it to fit naturally. Then you wanna take it to a sewing machine and zigzag across where the areas meet. And that's gonna give you a nice stable bracelet. Then we're going to glue the box over the stitched ends and that will make it doubly secure. Slip the elastic on a stamping block to glue it. Do not try to glue this while you're wearing it or you could burn yourself seriously. You want to put a bit of glue across where the elastics overlap and notice I've got about two inches wide of glue there and the stamping block is actually stretching it a little bit so I know that it is going to um, stretch when I wear it and it turned out working perfectly. And then you wanna leave that be on the block until it is completely dry. Now the fun part, we get to fill this with paint. I decided to use um, a fairly neutral red, um, a warm yellow ochre, a cool lemon yellow, a turquoise blue, and an ultramarine blue. That would give me a lot of options when I'm mixing my colors on the go. 
The lid of this box is going to be my mixing area, so I'm taking some packing tape and laminating it so it will be waterproof and I'll be able to wash it easily. So just take a piece of packing tape bigger than the lid, push it in there, smooth out any of the wrinkles and creases, and then trim off the excess with a craft knife. Then place the lid back on the box to make sure it still fits. Now that's not much of a mixing area. I think it'll be all right, but I still might laminate the inside cover of my watercolor pad just to have a little extra mixing room. But there you can see how well it fits. And isn't that adorable? I mean, it's a cute bracelet, even if you don't even plan on painting. You could put other trinkets in there too if you're not a watercolorist. I decided to make a tiny watercolor block to go with this, something that would fit in my front fishing vest that I wear when I kayak. That way I won't have to tip over my kayak trying to reach in the back storage area to get my paper. So what I did was I cut down two pieces of watercolor paper that were 9 by 12 and I could get 16 sheets of four and a half by three inch paper. So I stacked them up. I took a piece of cereal box, uh, the same size on the bottom and just a scrap piece of craft paper on the top, clipped them all together. And then I'm just sealing the edges with hot glue. I do have an in-depth video on how to make a watercolor block and I'll put that link in the video description so you can find it. But basically you need to glue all four sides of your papers together and just leave a little bit of gap so you can cut off each sheet after you've painted it. And um, I will cut off one of those brown pieces of paper Paper as soon as I have everything glued and put together inside my watercolor block. And I just chose some pretty scrapbook paper and I folded the edges in so I would have a really durable cover and I'm just gluing in that paper block inside and wrapping it around to make it super sturdy. And that's really all there is to it. Again, check out the link in the video description for a full in-depth tutorial on making a watercolor block so that you can kind of see a slower step-by-step -step process. But uh, that pretty much does it. For a little extra durability, I used washi tape to decorate the um, edge. I just kind of put half on and half off the end there. And then I'm also putting some washi tape over where the um, top piece of folded paper meets the middle that doesn't have any folded paper on it. And I left the bottom part unattached. So if I wanted to stick like a paper towel in there or maybe a finished painting or um, just anything, maybe even my water brush, I would have that option. I don't think it's going to be durable enough to hold the water brushes as an afterthought. I think that might rip the paper. So I decided I would leave that just as a paper towel holder and um, use a sock that I've cut the toe off of, kind of folded over itself to, um, to hold my water brushes to the watercolor block. And that way I'll have the sock to actually dab my brush off and I won't even need the paper towel in most cases. So that's a pretty compact kit and I hope it helps you find something that you can take on your travels that won't be uh, difficult to um, carry. And it's nice and compact. And if you don't wanna wear it as a bracelet, you can simply slip it around your um, watercolor block there, tuck your pens in the back Back and you'll be all set that way too. So any way you want to look at it, I think it's a super helpful little box. And if you're not a watercolorist, you know what? You could put other little trinkets or things inside of the box and it's still a very cute steampunky bracelet. I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please check out our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. Packaging for less. Happy crafting!